Couldn't even come in one of our new commercials. Oh, that's coming later. Okay. Ooh, a Great. little teaser before the show. Nice. Okay. Quite a tease. Um, well, while we're doing this, I'm going to try to figure out how to minimize the the amount of gigs that this is using. Because for some reason, StreamYard doesn't let you upload like a video that's longer than a minute. So you catch that, to... Rick? Mark is going to be completely checked out for this entire episode while he tries to focus on that. Big surprise. I'll start with you then, Brick. Uh, mental health check. How you doing? Um, the health is there. The only thing that's keeping me afloat right now is knowing that the last dance is tomorrow. Two more episodes. Dennis Rodman and the Detroit episode. So I'm thrilled. I can't wait. Have you, do you guys watch the first two episodes of the last dance? Yeah. And I, I really like, I'm not, I'm going to be the only guy to go to bat for Jerry Krause, but the guy's dead. And they're just shitting on him constantly. Like he was a mouthpiece for Reinsdorf the whole time. He just did whatever Jerry Reinsdorf told him to. And now everybody's like, obviously Michael hated him. And that's fine. Michael hated everybody. But I don't know. They're just, they're just kind of shitting on the guy. Like I've heard some interviews with players. Bill Wennington and Will Perdue have come on. And even Scottie Pippen came out like to the defense of him. Saying like, yeah, we didn't like him at the time, but he was fine. Like he was a nice, nice enough guy. I don't know. Yeah, I think that might be, yeah, whatever. It's a bit of an overreaction. But it's just someone needed a villain. I mean, to a certain degree, you broke up the Bulls. I mean, he got credit for putting the Bulls together. But at the same time, egos, you know, Napoleon Syndrome, egos kind of seem to be the clashing point of where, you know, the divide happened, which sucks because that's the last time Chicago was good at basketball. I mean, besides Derrick Rose for the one year that he was good with uh, where they had he like they had like two or three years that he was like fantastic and mesmerizing and the best player in the NBA, literally MVP, but nothing like them Bulls back in the day. Yeah, I don't think Derrick Rose deserved that MVP, but that's fine. What are you talking about? You don't think he deserved the MVP the year that he that he actually won it? Look at his stance versus LeBron's that year. Yeah, but what happened to the Bulls when Derrick Rose went out? Trash. Not at all. Okay, so this is, is the MVP supposed to be the best player in the league? Or is the valuable valuable to their their team? And either way, like you don't, you can, you can make that argument, but you don't know what, uh, what Cleveland or the, no, the Heat at that time, you don't know what the Heat would have looked like without LeBron. Right. But I still think that Derrick Rose was more pivotal of a, of a piece in terms of, I was happy LeBron. Yeah, yeah, he was the man. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, like, D-Rose, had a better year. Still love D Rose. I don't even care. The one thing we can agree on is it is sad as shit to watch when he's getting traded to the uh, the Knicks. Yeah, that clip of him being interviewed and they like tell him on the spot that he's getting traded and he's just like, "What, man?" Yeah, I never watched brutal. his doc, uh, his documentary that was done, but I I've heard very good things about it. I'll probably check it out. Maybe I'll wait till the last dance is over because that seems way more interesting. A hundred percent. But Mark, yeah, that's, that's what's going to be Anything run out of batteries this week? <laughs> no, dude. Yesterday, last night though, Moose like got sick. Well, he didn't, he threw up, but I was just afraid it was going to come out the other end, which is far worse because his farts smelled like fucking if you were making deviled eggs and left them sitting out for four months. Um, that is really, really descriptive. They were fucking bad. So I was freaking out. I'm like, if this guy wakes up in the middle of the night and takes a dookie right on this rug, I'm going to throw up. They were bad. I started feeling sick just from his fucking smart. I'm going to go ahead and cut you off right there because I, I think I've heard enough about Moose's butthole for one day. Uh, I was going to say, it would be a real mess for Mark to have to wipe his ass because he wipes his ass every time he poops. So that would be... If you'd stop the main problem with food, you probably wouldn't have to do that. No, he did have roast beef <laughs> this morning, though. Oh, dude, what is wrong with you? No wonder his farts smell terrible. And some Swedish fish. Oh Jeez. yeah, and a uh, plate of four-month-old deviled eggs as well. <laughs> I, I don't know why his farts smell exactly like four-month-old deviled eggs, but here we are. All right. Um, so this is episode 192. I will say this is going to be a shorter episode because we got a lot going on today with Mainframe Comic Con, which kicks off officially at noon central time. Woo! We got MainframeComicCon.com. It's also streaming on the YouTube channel. Tons of good good guests. Clark Gregg is our first guest this the, uh, today at noon. Uh, you know him, obviously, as Agent Coulson from Avengers. And uh, I'm totally blanking on the name of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 
Yep. Yeah. So stay tuned for all of that stuff. Streams go all into the night. It'll be some artists and creators coming together to auction off some stuff. Mark, stop fucking around with things. You're going to break our stream. <laughs> um, but that said, let's get into some news. News to us. Trailers are few and far between right now, but the, we're still getting announcements, which is really weird. And uh, I don't know. So this are, is are people like holding trailers? You think to kind of wait a little bit? Or? Trailers. I, I they would definitely hold back a movie, but I think as soon as you have finalized footage, you put the trailer out there. You want people thinking, yeah. talking about something for as long as humanly possible. So fair. That's why we got the teaser quote unquote trailer for um the Venom sequel, which the name is escaping me. Uh something carnage, carnage, carnage. But they're announcing this for June 25th, 2021. The, the name is officially Let There Be Carnage. Let There Be Carnage with Woody Harrelson. Mm-hmm. Which is cool, but also I don't need a teaser trailer for that, you know, a year ahead of time. Very true. Did you see what Woody looks like as Cletus Cassidy? You mean from the end of Venom? You well, yeah, no, that. But they had a they had a picture of him too. It looked like he straightened his curly ass hair and slicked so that back. A fucking terrible wig. Yeah, sure. it looks it's actual the biggest wig of all time. Mark, you should get one. <laughs> Why? Just because of the lack of hair you have. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you were gonna try and circumvent that. In and you're like, yeah. Yeah. go. Yeah, no. like it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Cheers. So we did get a trailer for The Great, which I think is a limited series coming to Hulu, starring Nicholas Holt and Elle Fanning. So Nicholas Holt uh, was the younger beast in the X-Men movies, the most recent X-Men movies. He's been in a ton of stuff. Warm Bodies, other movies like that. I kind of like him. He's a decent actor. He's British as fuck. And I guess this is the setting is russia a few hundred years ago where Mm. he marries l fanning and takes her like as the queen and she has ideas and like could actually help people and shit and he's basically just like no you're a woman just sit there and make babies exactly and it's in (laughs) russia they have the the this is kind of right up my alley a comedy based on a period piece a satire period piece but it's in russia obviously they've kind of done this before um, not from Russia, but I believe who, what's the um, who was the actress from Bumblebee? Uh, I don't know. They they just came out with that movie Emma, though, which is very similar that's, to this. It's like that's what I was going century for. satire, and it, but it's based in England. Haley Steinfeld, that's what she was, and she is the one playing Emma. Um, so it's kind of similar in that vein, but I think it's going to be really funny to see how they play portray some of the Russian, you know, leadership and just, they have, they have some pretty good quips. They had some pretty good lines in there. And Definitely. You know, the very end where he, you know, throws the dog off the, off the balcony. I was like, boo! so it just, it's a lot of shit that is, I don't know. It took me off edge. I, I mean, I mean, I'm in for it. I'm here. I figured it was more your speed than Mark's Mark. Did you take anything from this other than when I hopped in the chat, you were like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Yeah, um, it's fine, I guess. I get it. It's just, yeah, it's just a satire based on old shit in so Russia. Is it based off of Catherine the Great, I'm guessing? I, I'm not sure about that, but were you guys thrown all that they were saying it's in Russia and everybody has a British accent? A little bit. There was, at the middle point, I was like, oh yeah, they're all speaking English. I was like, okay. But yeah. that, that's fair, it has to be. I mean, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> Parasite, but I'm just saying... No, they made a point though to like keep saying Russia, like to pound it in your brain. This is Russia, not England. Which is <laughs> That's a, yeah, true. I don't know. Rick, I'm trying to think of what movie you're talking about with Haley Steinfeld because Steinfeld because it's not Emma. Emma is with it's Anya Taylor Joy, and she's the girl from uh, from uh, what's the M Night Shyamalan yeah. movie? Fucking Split. Uh, glass. Yes, yeah, Split and Glass. Dickinson, Emily okay. Dickinson. That's what she plays it in. And there's a show in Emma, too. So there is a lot of things going on. Uh, Dickinson is actually a show on... What, sh- what station is that? It might be Apple TV, actually. Oh, so nobody's seen it. So nobody's surprised. Nobody's fucking seen that. 
I actually like have Apple TV too. Oh, okay, I, I see what you're talking about. It's a TV series. Yep. On uh, correct. Yeah, she plays Emily Dickinson, mm-hmm. and she's like kind of trying to, you know, break the glass ceiling for the time that it's in. And she's just a bad. She's just like a badass in it. She's actually funny too. I think I've seen an episode. Of and I'm. I'll watch this. I'm kind of excited for it actually. Same. Is that Momoa Apple TV show out? Good question. I think so. Yeah, it's been out for a while. I'm pretty sure. C, I think it's called or whatever. Yes, people actually said it was pretty good, but I don't know if it's like. Doesn't it look exactly like that Frontier show that we watched? Yeah, with? I was gonna say. Remember Frontier? It was so just low budget, but I didn't mind it that much. There was one really visceral torture scene where just Jason Momoa gets like stabbed through his armpit. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Scene will stick with me forever. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's like funny. when I watched Bone Hawk and they they split a guy in half, starting taint first. <laughs> like, I, I, great. I'm never gonna get that out of my fucking head. Yeah. In uh, Extraction, the first mm-hmm. actual action set was the guys like I'm gonna stick this pistol up his butthole and shoot all his insides out, and I was like, ugh. Dude, they were sick of. <laughs> really disturbing violent scenes in this and i can just see mark getting erect right now i think that's why he's poison master this week right are we okay we'll do it there was a lot of verbal abuse and physical abuse which was mm-hmm. you know all right mark, you so call, much you keeping track of points um i guess yeah sure i didn't know we were gonna do that this week but yeah way to catch us off guard brick um speaking of streaming services that nobody has or nobody will get do either of you have plans to pay 15 bucks a month for HBO Max? Oh, what have they I already released? have HBO Go. Yeah, what have they released in terms of what content is exclusively going to be on there? So they put out a trailer for the new Looney Tunes, which is kind of rebooted Saturday morning cartoons, I guess. They'll okay. take over Doom Patrol from DC Universe, mm. Adventure Time movies. There's a talk show with Elmo. Um, and I know that uh, Bad Robot is going to produce like Justice League Dark and a few other series and movies, basically DC centric as far as original programming goes. Um, there was talk for a long time about Sesame Street actually moving to this platform, and it pissed a lot of people off because forever it's been on PBS and it's been public access, so everybody had access to it without having to pay extra money for it. Now things are different. Okay. I don't know. None of those titles nope. super scream out at me that like I need to get this immediately. You know? Are you are you sure Doom Patrol is like HBO Max is going to take Doom Patrol, or is DC just going to allow them to play it as well? DC I, Universe. Oh, you mean would it only air on one as opposed to the other? Correct. Yes. The only reason I think that's the case is because none of the other DC shows have been announced to go to HBO Max. So if I would think that if they were going to share the property, that they would announce like all of DC shows are going to be available on HBO Max. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so we'll see. it says I just looked this up on Google from Trench, uh, from TechCrunch. Wow, way wrong word. In total, HBO Max prom- HBO Max promises a library of over two thousand feature films in the first year. Okay, and finally, the service will also pull from Warner Media libraries. Um, Warner new, owns DC. Okay, yeah, New Line and library titles such as DC, CNN, TNT, TBS, True TV, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, and Looney Tunes. So, again, if I guess if there's ever a time where dark superheroes need somebody to like help them out, it's going to be HBO. As an HBO makes those good dark superhero. Like, think about Watchmen. Watchmen was great i loved Watchmen. they have a dark yeah. gritty concept maybe if some hbo writers combine with some dc writers they'll actually come out with some good content so if it's really for me the only thing that really st- stands out here is the is going to be dc and then maybe some of that i guess adventure time movie would be pretty funny is it going to be cartoon or is it going to be live action do we know uh we don't i i believe it's going to be live action but i need to double check on that um I guess my point about this is there could not be a worse time to be coming out with a new streaming service, especially one that is more expensive than Hulu, Netflix, and Disney Plus. And has and there's already an HBO out there. 
Yeah, but it's not like they came out with it when this shit started happening. They've announced this for the last six months, you know, and it's not like they're going to be like, okay, we're not doing it anymore because the COVID-19 shit when realistically everyone's home now, which would be a, a better time to launch something like this, you know, because people have more options. Sure, but they could easily have delayed this and deferred some costs back until at least unemployment drops below 30 million people. Dude, did you see Netflix stock? They don't have, they can't take that chance. They need they to keep just, right now. Netflix also just released a whole bunch of debt. They're selling bonds right now. Like they are ramping up. Netflix is never going to get out of debt. Well, like they will just perpetually be, in, which is totally fine. They don't, they don't ever have to pay down everything. They can continue to fund everything that way. It's just crazy to me that they keep doing that. And while they still sit on a pile of cash. Wasn't that the same thing with Amazon? You could say the same thing about Amazon. I mean, have they even released earnings that were in the plus? And AMC, right? Well, AMC doesn't have a pile of cash. AMC had to release really high interest rate debt. Uh, Netflix and Amazon are way more stable companies. Right. They, they have the GDP of you know greater than 90% of countries in the world. So they don't actually need it. They just do it because it's cheap right now. Whereas AMC needed the cash. They had to have that. Otherwise, they would have gone under. Did you see how much they paid Reed, Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix this year? No. His his pay increased 7%, went up to $38.6 million. As opposed to $36 million last year. He, he made another $2 million. Eat the rich. Off of people just it's fucking suffering from Corona. Winters. Yeah. Um, I don't really know how we got down this dark path, but <laughs> oh yeah, I guess yeah, we can but... talk about this this Venom sequel. It's going to be written. Oh no, I'm sorry. The writers of Venom, Scott Rosenberg and Jeff Pinkner, are adapting One Punch Man for a live action movie. Yes, amazing. Who is going to play One Punch Man, and why is it Danny DeVito? Ooh, this is hard. Because you'd think they're going to try and cast uh, someone of Asian descent, which narrows down, I guess, like the, the pool of actors that we know by name. Especially, Especially Michael Sarah, Like, how creepy would he look bald? Like, I mean, what did Jesse Eisenberg look like bald when he was Lex Luthor? That's exactly what he'll look like. Uh, that's a good point. I'm just seeing a bunch of people posting pictures of The Rock as One Punch Man, which is hilarious but classic of course he's the honestly person. you kind of have to have like an everyman i in. agree he has to be s small skinny i i, I like the michael Sarah play that's actually or what about uh uh mclovin <laughs> who's no. that guy you know what i think donald glover would be the best choice for this just the way he acts and is just like no nah. just doesn't give a fuck um I think he'd do great as One Punch Man. Mark, who played Lex Luthor in Smallville? <sighs> Good question. I didn't watch Smallville ever. Wow. Some DC fan. Oh, you know what? Who plays the Dean in um, oh, Community? God. Really? <laughs> uh, Jim Rash. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Honestly, like that's kind of the... It's not perfect, but that, that direction maybe toned down a little bit. You're just thinking yeah. of all guys. Oh, Michael absolutely. Rosenbaum. Played Lex in Smallville. Okay, so basically we just need like an unassuming, bald, kind of skinny guy who's a little bit in shape. And then... Bill Burr. Completely deadpan, straight face, everything. Bill Burr would never do this. No. I don't but want somebody already that's bald, though. I want somebody with hair, and they make him go bald for this role. You want somebody that's going to look really weird bald? Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. So are they going to like shave his eyebrows too and like make sure he has zero body hair? Like maybe you make Jason Momoa really lose 60 pounds and Did shave his eyebrow and hair. Bowl commercial? Yeah, make him look like that. Gross. Oh, dude, what about Rob Cor Rob Cordry? Uh, I think he might be too big. You think? Also, that's kind of old, don't you think? Sure, I, I suppose. Yeah, Paul Shear maybe. The guy from the league. Nah. Um, uh, David Cross. <laughs> David Cross would be good if if he wore jorts. <laughs> just maybe, Tobias out there. Maybe yeah. we should do like an, an Instagram 
pick your pick your one punch man and then just have like a lineup of six guys and we'll photoshop them as bald we'll throw them I on think, there. uh boss logic shout out one of our guests for mainframe comic-con later today actually did that already yeah he was really out uh, like kind of a, a rendering of certain big name actors that would look how they would look as bald one punch man so hilarious <clears throat> Jason Muse is a bald man. That'd be kind of funny too. So who is uh, the who is the producer of this? What's the what what company is that is making this? Sony. Sony. So money behind it. Yeah, it's uh, produced by and written by the guys who are uh, Venom writers and producers. So okay, so Tom Holland. <laughs> eh, Tom, <laughs> cast the same people for everything. That's why we need Danny DeVito. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. But also. Imagine Tom Holland bald. I can't. Either can I. Okay. Uh, West just, uh, pick- sorry, I just finished the 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 um. Fuck! You made me lose my train of thought. I made or- you lose your train of thought. <laughs> the fuck. Uh, Always Sunny episode where Danny DeVito is arguing with the the other boxing gym fucking manager, and he's getting his daughter, and then he's the manager's getting his daughter to fight. Danny DeVito clocks him and then does the whole fucking uh what's that movie where the the baby boxer well, yeah. our, million dollar, dollar baby million yeah, dollar man. baby great episode sorry I almost said gone girl. Like what the fuck? You, you almost had me to say gone girl but because you said <laughs> gone girl I was <laughs> gonna say Cinderella man I'm like no that's not it oh banger of a movie I love Cinderella man uh okay Westworld's been picked up for season four so HBO is planning six seasons right now with I, I think this is hilarious. They're saying that Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy are going to continue to write this. So they're basically trying to get out ahead of everybody saying like, no, you fucked up Game of Thrones <laughs> <laughs> by saying we're going to keep the same writers. They're going to be the same creative minds who are producing this show that is wildly popular. Mark, are you caught up on Westworld? Yeah. I am not. Um, I think I think I am. The last episode I watched was... Uh, do you see the one where, where um, neither of us are caught up? So no. Yeah, I saw the first and second episode. I think. Okay, you and guys are waiting to watch it. With yeah, I really think that this show is just so much easier to binge watch because there's so much shit going on. I agree. That's the reason that I at season two I was like, there's so much going on, and at at, at like the midpoint I was like so jumbled that after after that i kind of lost track and i didn't want to kind of go back but i did finish it obviously but it's like i felt like it was much easier to digest binging it you need to go and watch this episode where aaron paul is given this drug and it makes him feel like he's in five different movies that are playing out like a sad movie like a drama an action movie and he's just tripping balls the whole time and while this is happening they're under like this fucking extremely intense heist shootout all the shit is going on and he's just tripping out it's fucking great westworld is so good at different settings i i don't know how they do it but like they obviously they travel all over the world i watched the you know the vignette that they did about uh, it was war world where basically they were i think they were in italy, in italy. italy. <laughs> yeah. and yeah. the setting they had there was gorgeous and just Beautiful. absolutely perfect so that's how italy is though so you know Minus everything else that's happening now. But yeah, gorgeous. I, I also wanted to point out, it's kind of interesting because Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy have signed deals to go on and produce shows at Amazon. And HBO may also made it a point to say like, no, they're going to do this too. So they are very much getting out ahead of you know whatever detractors would be saying, namely me, saying about how they fucked up and botched Game of Thrones. But. Yeah, well, also yeah. Game of Thrones. The writer was George R. R. Martin. It wouldn't didn't really matter who was writing the show at the. At yeah, the, it's, they were going to botch it regardless. But it, this is necessarily coming from a series of books. Exactly. Yeah, it was originally a movie in the seventies, but like there is, there they've been off script since day one. So, as long as they keep the same creators who have a vision, I think it's interesting that they they say they can do this for six seasons because it's. I, I draw the parallel to Fast and Furious, where they're like just going more and more over the top. But mm-hmm. I mean, where do you where do you continue going? Well, they have the entire world history to dive into. 
which I can see this being one of those series where at the very end, the bad guy wins, whoever they determine the bad guy to be. It's just like the world is taken over by robots. Definitely. Well, we created our own, you know, demise by doing it. So I guess it could possibly end that way. Definitely. An allegory for artificial intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Deep. Which is which is the literally the last episode of the season finale of Silicon Valley. Have you guys seen that? I yeah. am caught up. I'm it's, so pissed. Like I, I need to sit down and watch it. I actually like the ending. It's satisfying. It's satisfying, but it's actually kind of depressing. It is. It's pretty depressing. But you need to go watch it if you haven't. You need to finish Silicon Valley. Yeah. Can we quick I mean, inter quick interjection here? Middle Ditch and Schwartz on Netflix. The improv. The two man improv show. I've been dying. I watched all three episodes. They're an hour long. Have you guys checked it out yet or no? I sat mm-hmm. down and started watching it last night. And I didn't have enough time because I had a, well, I thought we were going to do the episode and I had another call. Um, so I watched something shorter instead, but it's absolutely on my list. I love both of those guys. Dude, it is honestly brilliant. Some of the things that they come up with. Um, just they have two chairs. That's all they have. They have two chairs, a stage, and they take on multiple multiple characters they do a five minute interview with like someone ran it's kind of like the whose line is anyway where they throw the audience throws out ideas and so the first idea that they kind of come up with is they ask they hear it and then they ask like five or six like follow-up questions and getting all these little nitty-gritty details and then they do a 45 to 50 minute sketch and just bring Mm -hmm. back it's all callbacks all callbacks improv and sketch it's improv and yeah, I guess I guess could sketch, but it's all like yeah, callback humor. How they bring back everything from what they originally from like the original interview with these people is brilliant. And it's also had me dying laughing on several occasions. Several occasions. Now, now that you've said this, you have to find something different for your recommendations at the end of the show. Deal. All right, I need to run to the bathroom. I drank too much coffee. Be all right, well, we'll just bullshit for a minute while he's doing this. Um, in the most no shit, duh, news around. AMC says that they are not going to reopen their theaters until uh, production studios start putting out new movies. Like, duh, yeah, dude. Oh this my god. Seems like, you need to scratch my. Like, this is a symbiotic relationship. You can't, you can't start releasing movies if there are no theaters open, and you can't open your theaters if there are no movies coming out because nobody's going to fucking go. This seems like the most no shit move of all time. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Uh, who was opening up the? Who said that they were opening up theaters? Wasn't it like Georgia or Florida? Yes, it was Georgia. Yeah, in place, but also these people are morons. Like, this is just give it a month. Give it one fucking month. Exactly. They're giving us stuff to look at. They're giving us stuff to watch. I mean, Extraction. They gave us that right now. It's like a great movie. I loved it. Yeah. Spoil, spoiler for the this show, not the actual movie. Oh, yeah. I liked it. All right, let's keep on rolling. Well, should we? Best, best, we the best. Worst, worst, worst. The worst. She's the worst person in the world. Huge skank, terrible. But thank you. Yes, Brick. Go ahead. I have one that correlates to what we were just talking about, which was the Michigan anti-quarantine protests, and some of the things that people are protesting about are a little ridiculous. So if you want to pull that clip up, it's my guy, Tim Robinson, writer and star of Detroiters, which is the most underrated show. Honestly, underrated. So underrated. Um, I want fertilizer. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's that's the guy. He's already. So check out the video. He's the last one here at the very end, making fun of all these goddamn protesters. Oh, I saw this. You can't buy paint. You can't buy lawn. You can't buy lawn fertilizer or grass seed or whatever. I mean, come on. Is he crying? All statewide. <laughs> you know, it's time for to be opened up. We're tired of not being able to buy the things that we need. We're Go tired. Dressers, get our hair done. Now's when I start to buy my Halloween stuff. What am I not supposed to buy my Halloween stuff? <laughs> really? <laughs> 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 There's uh-huh. no spirit Halloween store that's gonna be open this year. I'm fucking gonna lose it. I lost. Fuck. Really? Oh, hilarious. Um, I love him. He's so funny and so random. He's like way over the top with it. Even in Detroiters, they have a thing called Chump of the Week where they go into a random little segment. If you guys have not seen Detroiters, no. 
we've i think literally mark and i have avoided this show because you never shut the fuck up about it they literally have every yeah. episode they they have a chump of the week and it's fucking brilliant it's so fun i, I love the show sam richardson's in it tim robinson they're have like this best friend connection that's super funny and way over the top and again like tim robinson himself right there just over the top and just hilarious he's some of his reactions in that show are next level i uh i want to get back to the woman who was talking about her bad roots some girl on reddit like sat down and did the math based on like the size of a, an average woman's finger like her pointer finger and the size of her roots and the average ha- time it takes your hair to grow and determined that that woman had not gotten her hair done since like october <laughs> and now she's not really sure. i just i thought it was really funny like that's how bored everyone is right now and that's that's what we're fucking reduced to and in me i'm an idiot i went out and read the entire fucking thing and <laughs> did the math on it so yeah, well, the science behind hair growth is it's one follicle per. It's like, all right, <laughs> seriously, follicle? I don't even know words, so you can no, pass no. that along. Uh, are you watching Velasa Pasture yet? I already did. It was brilliant. Got to come back. I, I, I'm yeah, rewatching it for the third time because it's so good. All right, I have a best man alive, and this is an actual best man alive, not somebody we're gonna shit on for a minute. Uh, the Indian scientists who discovered a new pit viper and named it after one of the Hogwarts founders, uh, Salazar Slytherin. Ooh. You don't know the Harry Potter lore. Ooh. Salazar Slytherin started, um, he was a parcel tongue, which meant that he could talk to snakes. So it's just like, it, it's a really cool thing. Like, it seems like if you and I discovered some weird snake, some, like you would name it after a Batman villain, one of his rogues gallery, if you will. Uh, I just think like that's cool that you can kind of bring pop culture into this scientific, I guess, biological type of, I don't know, or I don't, I don't know what the actual word for it is. But also, how are we still discovering snakes? I have no idea. It's It I mean, makes me want to be a snake fucking scien- scientist or what? what is a what is a snake? If your job is just strictly looking at the biology and investigating and finding new snakes, what is that? That's a role? really good question. I a don't snakeologist. know. Snakeologist. Snake. Oh, it is a snake. No fucking way. It's snakeology. Yes. No, it's it's. I think it's herpetology. Ooh. That the branch like of zoology out. concerned with the study of amphibians and reptiles, including That's snakes. A lot lizards. more accurate than snakeologist. Well, no, they do have. It is snakeology is. A word uh, that arrives on the internet. So I don't know if it's real or not. Whatever. Um, but this is a slippery slope. Honestly, think about bringing pop culture into you know the actual scientific world. Once we get into space and time travel, there's going to be a lot of Rick and Morty quotes. So the flu, the fluber doobers, or whatever. Plumbus, I found. <laughs> yeah, the, the, actually, we're yeah, whoa. We'll say with a plumbus. Act, the, the creation of the plumbus is also hilarious too. But yeah. That's a dangerous, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, but the people that actually discover new stuff are probably smarter than us, so they won't name it dumb things. Just a thought. They just named it after the Harry Potter snake, so, I mean, I, I think we're that one. A little more ubiquitous and well-known than Rick and Morty, and it appeals to wider audiences than Rick and Morty. Give it, well, 70 episodes of Rick and Morty. Sometime, I think that might be overpassing. Harry Potter. I don't think we're ever going to get 70 episodes of Rick and Morty at this rate. No fucking way. We'll, be, bunch, we'll be 38 years old. Y'all a bunch of haters. And by then, there will be someone who grew up watching Rick and Morty, turns into a scientist, and names something a Plumbus. I'm fine with that. He'll be my best man alive that week when we're 80 years old. Hell Mark, yeah. best man alive? Um, No, I have a worst girlfriend alive. Actually, it's it's pretty much every girlfriend. If you guys were watching the NFL draft these last few days or whatever, it was two days ago or whatever, um, yes, today, you, today. you just see everyone, even just any family member, wanting screen time, just trying to one-up their other family member and be the center of attention when the draft is going on and they're, they're on their fucking stream cam. But there is this girlfriend of Isaiah, Ta- Ta- Isaiah Wilson who – was selected 28 29th overall pick to the Baltimore Baltimore Ravens and his girlfriend is just 
hugging him, not letting him go. And you could see her like looking at the camera, making sure she's in the fucking shot. And then Isaiah, Isaiah Wilson's fucking mom just takes her and rips her off the couch. It's fucking great. I sent you the link Smithers. I don't know if you can pull that up real quick. I sent it to your Google message. Um, but it's fucking just hilarious. Everyone during this draft, all the family members, girlfriends, whatever, were just trying to get that screen time. And it that was the best part. Other than that, the draft was fucking boring, in my opinion. The draft is always boring, though. Like I I know that we're so starved for sports right now that like I totally get watching. I, I watched it just because I was fucking bored. But then I remembered, oh yeah, this is boring as fuck. So boring, especially later on in the rounds, especially if your team doesn't have any picks until the second round, aka the Bears. Well, Dude, at least wasn't you completely yeah. bought your pick and pick a fucking quarterback that you traded up for. Oh, wait, you did that three years ago, but now the Packers did it. So, wasn't there a coach that had like his sons there and one of his sons had the door open in the bathroom and was taking a shit? And you can see him taking the shit on the reflection of like one of the his glass, like I don't know, cabinet they, or something. They addressed that and said, like, you know, he was actually just sitting on a stool, but yeah, he was probably just like, taking a dump. <laughs> he was fucking taking a dump. All right, here's the video that you were talking about, Mark. Let's. let's He's uh, just like. So the Titans get themselves. Look at her. Like, yeah. Wilson from Georgia. Game nah, nah, get nah, here. Nah. Nope, get away from my son. Get the fuck get out of here. Get the fuck out here. Wow, that's rough. That is brutal. Not your moment, you know? I love that shit, cool. though. That's great. Um, if I was that mom, I'd do the same fucking thing. Like, that's my son. Get the fuck out of here. You need okay. to pull that that one guy's dad's move and just roll off the <laughs> roll off of the camera. Like, yeah. we got, I guess he was drafted by the 49ers, which is the dad's favorite team, which obviously you're just like, oh, roll out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this reminds me, though, of like a, a meme from a while ago when RG3 got drafted. And this, I, I think it was on like, uh, I don't know, somebody tweeted about it. They were, they were like, yeah, um, the way she looks at this man, like she just hit the lottery when in reality, he just fucking dumped her immediately. And Ooh. yeah. All right. I have one more best person alive. Oh. And that is someone by the name of Lindsay Devers. So she trained for five months to run the Boston Marathon. Obviously, it's been canceled. So she was like, I'm going to take all this training I did and I'm still going to run this marathon, uh, which, you know, props to you. That's way more discipline than I have. But she mapped this out on the Strava app, which is basically just like a run tracker. And she had this whole thing planned out and she was going to pay homage to those who lost their lives during the Boston bombings. And this is what she ended up with. Boston Strog. Almost. She all the way out there and still only ended up missing one letter. She fucking left out the N. Ultimate botch. And this, she mapped this out so intricately that it was 26.2 miles, the exact length of a marathon. And she just botched this part. <laughs> Good for her, though. I mean, it's, well, it's yeah. a nice effort and a nice uh, thing to do. That. Yeah. Uh, the thought but, was there, but it just was not a completed thought because she misspelled the word. It's kind I of like he, Rick, man. The thought is there usually, just the execution never happens. You know, it's just like very yeah. true, very true. Could she did not agree more. Where she was interviewed by a couple outlets, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm an idiot." So I mean, at least she could, she can laugh about it, which is great. Like that's that is what you need to get through life is to be able to laugh at yourself. So yeah, and also <laughs> what was she gonna what she'd be like? Oh fuck! <laughs> just like <laughs> God, that's what I would have done. Yeah, so I wouldn't be running a marathon in the first place. So exactly. Um, can we go back to the draft real quick? Did you guys see Matt Nagy's room where he's pe he's searching for Pepe Silvia? Like he had everything mapped out; all his walls were covered. Did you guys yeah, see that or no? Ryan Pace draft anymore? He has to do it himself because Ryan Pace fucking sucks at it. Yeah, so he he went deep. I just wanted to bring that up because that was what a war room. A lot of funny shit coming out of the draft. At least it's content, you know. Finally, yeah, sports is back for one more day and then it's this close to starting to watch korean baseball like that is how much i need live competition korean wow. baseball not japanese like you're uh, going korean korean korea and china started up their leagues japan had to put theirs on hold again because somebody tested positive wow 
So yeah. I didn't even know Korea had a league. Obviously, Japan yeah. does because that's where all of the the MLB players usually come out of if they're coming Actually, out of Asia. Um, Ishiro did. He was obviously the most famous, like Hideo Nemo. <laughs> But a lot of the guys, a lot of the Asian players that come over are coming from South Korea. Wow. Really? Yeah. Anyways. Hideki Matsui, where, where was he from? Japanese. Here's an interesting question that I think maybe we can think about in direct next week. Once we reach a world that is close to Star Trek, uh, what what will sci-fi shows look like? Will it? Will we just transition from that to like these are reality shows now. Holy shit, that just blew my mind. God damn it, Ord. You just blew my mind, man. Maybe it will just be the opposite, where sci-fi is like our shitty lives that we have now on Earth, where it's just like everyone's quarantined. Everything goes and, back to period pieces. And fighting over toilet paper. Yeah, look know? at this. Look at this shitty caveman planet. Let's go explore the cavemans. They reverse it. <clears throat> exactly. That may, nope, I have no idea. Doing blow and wearing suits that are way too big with shoulder pads <laughs> i always am fascinated man <laughs> i always am fascinated seeing shows from like the 1940s and being like the year 2000 and how they portray it so damn that's, that's a really, really i kind of want to think about that sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there's a really interesting subreddit out there called retro futurism where i love retro futurism old mag old magazine like this is what things will look like in the year 2000 and shit it's very interesting. Well, that's why I think everybody's driving like bubble cars and shit. Oh well, yeah, that's why I liked the the, sh the game Bioshock so much. It was all retro futuristic and like the city of Atlantis. You're kind of living, or no, no, it's not Atlantis. It's basically it's based off of Atlantis. It's called something mm -hmm. else, but it is like it's all retro futurism, and I, that's I, that's why I love that little concept. The third Bioshock, where they're in the in the clouds. Yeah, the ending of that game, it blew my fucking mind. The, all the lighthouses, dude. I that's yeah. my best. That's my favorite series of all time. It might be like the best one. Of, it's top five, like single player story mode for me. So yeah, and they're making a new one, which is fucking awesome. Yes. Finally, it's been ten years since they brought that last one out. I feel. No, it hasn't been that long. It's been like six, I think it's been six. It's probably been six. All right, we are running a little bit long, so let's get right into the review for Extraction. I think we're going to be really careful this episode to not spoil it because it just dropped yesterday. And Ooh, the, the best part is the spoiler at the end, though. It really is. And I think maybe we should talk about that. Maybe we'll come back to it next week. But mm. I know not everybody's watched this, and there's not a whole lot going on out there. And I feel like everybody's going to watch this. It's, number, it's immediately number one trending on Netflix. Like yeah. it I, it went from not being trending at all when I watched it at noon probably yesterday to number 1 when I looked this morning. So everybody's watching it. I think I'm going to watch it again honestly. I really? started up this morning. Yeah. All right. So extraction. 63% from rot on Rotten Tomatoes, 70% from fans. This is the directorial debut of a guy named Sam Hargrave who's been a stuntman in Hollywood forever. Mm -hmm. He was a stunt coordinator on Captain America Civil War and Avengers Endgame. He's it shows working with the Russo brothers. So uh, Joe Russo is the guy who wrote this script. And it's actually an adaptation of a comic that he wrote in 2014 called Ciudad, which makes me think it was uh, set in South America instead of uh, India. But yeah. And the, the child or young, young boy. adult was a, uh, was a girl instead of a boy. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Did that you read trying to get back? I did not. I was. Uh, I looked into it a little bit. Um, I looked at some reviews on various comic book websites, and they're kind of all over the board. And the one thing that people really bitched about was the art. They just thought it was like sloppy. Even like some artists, they have that type of style, but some people were just like, "No, it's not consistent. It's just really sloppy. It's in black and white, but it's not like The Walking Dead where you have to do it right if you're going to have it in black and white." Overall, a lot of people were kind of shitting on the art. And that's one thing that bothers me when I read graphic novels is if I can't get with the art, it's it's going to bother me probably more than it does for you. I feel like you're more about yeah, the dialogue. Yeah. And stuff, I was going to say but. we are polar opposites on that. Like I'm all about a good story. As long as the story is good, I will read anything. And you're like taken out if the art's not on point. So and I'm, I'm the gonna... third person here where it's like if it's not a movie, I'm not even going to pay attention to it. <laughs> you're the third person where you're like, I can't read. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably well, going to actually read it, though. It looks it looks OK. And I'm more curious now after watching this movie. How it is. I so, a lot of people are going to be selling copies of this. So, yeah. So speaking of reading, I'm, let me read the little blurb on IMDb of what this movie is actually about. Tyler Rake, a.k.a. Chris Hemsworth, a fearless black market mercenary, embarks on the most deadly extraction of his career when he enlisted in to capture or to rescue a kidnapped son of an imprisoned international crime lord. Whoo! So you just wanted to read that to prove that you can actually read. Uh, yeah, I botched it a couple of times, but not as many as I thought I was going to. Cool. Thank you. I thought you read that pretty good. Thanks, guys. Uh, so, yes, I think that it's they don't hit enough on how self-destructive Chris Hemsworth is. Like he's looking for suicide by someone else's gun. Which mm -hmm. I think is really kind of riveting in the in the sense of this movie is is and they show it multiple times throughout the show, like right in the beginning where he just like the first his friend is they're like kind of hanging on a cliffside in Australia, and he's like, "Damn, that's a pretty far way down." Just like without even thinking, he just like jumps off of it, no problem, and then just sits at the very bottom of it, which kind of comes back later in the end, not in the end, but like throughout the movie, they kind of have this whole theme of yeah. drowning more or less and. I, that I was a cool here, scene uh, too. <clears throat> Sorry, Mark. Go ahead. I said no. I was just saying that was a really cool scene. I thought. I thought the cinematography was some of the the better um, the better things about this movie. You can tell that the the stuntman director mm -hmm. did a great job with some of the choreography and stunts. They have the the one shot um, camera angle when they kind of go from a car chase to kind of running through these little houses in like a little condensed apartment. I think they did a great job of like feeling clustered, feeling like there's, you're very like contained inside of this little, you know, hallway of, of people. And he's just like going through murdering people and all the murder scenes just seemed like they were so authentic because Chris Hemsworth is actually a big dude. And they had all small, it seemed like small actors. And he was literally like big stepping into people and just mm -hmm. like, crushing people it was great i loved that was the best part of the whole movie was the action set pieces i think every fight scene too i i was afraid they were going to start getting into that that shaky cam shit where you can't even follow it and it just mm -hmm. looks all over the place i was i nervous. thought they did a good job where everything was clean all the fight the techniques everything you can tell that was chris hemsworth doing the fighting it was it was good and i enjoyed the shit out of it so so think, everyone's going to compare this to John Wick, which kind of makes sense. Um, you know, it's directed by stuntmen. It's this kind of the the gun fu thing. Um, it has a little bit more shaky cam than John Wick does, and mm -hmm. I think that if you're going to compare these, John Wick has a way better story because they built an entire world and a universe oh, yeah. uh, outside of reality, kind of. But I mean, still, I, if they had spent a little more time on the script for this and, and developing the backstories. Mm -hmm. It would have been on par. I I can agree with that, but I think I liked. I hate shaky cam in all mo, in most facets, but I felt in this specific setting, the minimal shaky cam that they had kind of brought in another element of like how you know claustrophobic this really was. You yeah. know, I just felt like India, the way they have all those people like in the streets and just everything was just so like jam packed. They literally have a fight scene at the end of that one shot camera where they're in the streets and Chris Hemsworth literally is about to throw a punch, but there's a, dr a someone driving on a little scooter, like comes back with a bunch of cakes and he pulls back really quickly mm -hmm. and just like, it just so condensed and just the way that they shot that. I think the camera, the shaky cam actually enhanced that feel within that um, specific scene for me personally. Yeah. And the, the movements too, with the cinematography, when they like the majority of this is Chris Hemsworth moving, he has to mm -hmm. move. He's extracted. He's, taking this kid away from the city, trying to extract and get him out of harm's way. So he's always on the move, always running, always moving up and down stairs. And that's how the camera is. There's shots where like the camera is in front of Chris Hemsworth backwards, like in stepping downstairs as he's coming forward. And there's just some really cool shots, which is one thing Very I really liked about this. Mean. What did yeah. you guys, what did you guys think of um, the cameo? Our guy, David Harbour. We did see him in one of the trailers, but mm -hmm. he played a great character. Like that is his wheelhouse. Slightly oh, disturbed, but also a badass. 
got some some issues that maybe need to be addressed but yeah it, it was awesome by the way appearing at mainframe comic-con tomorrow david harbour let's go hell yeah um, I, I think he did a great job too. They, their chemistry, Hemsworth and Harbor, their chemistry, you could tell that they were kind of, you know, friends. And so I, I liked the chemistry between them, even though his, his part was a little shorter than I wanted. But I mean, I, I, I just liked him jumping into this movie. I didn't realize in the trailer he was in there. And so when he appeared on screen, I was very happy. I, uh, I'm very, I'm not happy because I would love to talk to him, but I'm, I'm glad that I'm not interviewing David Harbor because I'd just be like, what was it like to wrestle with Chris Hemsworth? Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, some of the other actors in this, obviously, these are um, unknown to us, but some of them are, are Bollywood actors. Um, there was, uh, I'm going to absolutely butcher these names, Golshafith Farahani was Nick, a.k.a. like uh, Chris Hemsworth Handler. She gets a chance to be a badass later on in the movie. She was pretty mm -hmm. good. And also the guy who played Saju, his name is Randi Puda. Uh, he's um, a Hindi actor and he was great in this. He was, his action scenes were as good as Chris Hemsworth's. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's a tribute to the direct, <clears throat> the direction and the way it was shot and everything and the stunt coordinating. But the way that they didn't make, like they make him seem just as big a badass as Chris, Chris Hemsworth. And they have some fucking epic fight scenes together. I thought that was excellent. Yeah, they had a good character arc for that guy because I wasn't sure. I was always rooting for Chris Hemsworth the whole time, but then like it kind of goes. We're not sure what this with this specific guy we're rooting for, and then later on, kind of comes clear rooting against, and then you're just like, ah, just a lot of mystery with that character specifically for me. I kind of disagree on that part because it it seems like they were trying to make you care about somebody before you know why you should care about them, and I don't know. I'd be picking nits if I said that really bothered me because I didn't watch this for the story. Uh, yeah. So, uh, all right, we're running a little long. I'll let you guys wrap up. Mark, final thoughts. <clears throat> um, <laughs> again, I liked it. It is, uh, it's a fast paced movie, a lot of action, a lot of blood, a lot of gore. Um, if you're not into that, do not watch this movie, but Chris Hemsworth, I thought did a great job. Yes, there are a lot of Bollywood actors, and that is another thing I really, really thought was awesome about this movie is it gives some exposure to these talented actors just in a different country, you know, that a lot of us aren't aren't familiar with. Um, there is one guy, he is he's literally the Kenny Powers of India. I knew you were say that. <laughs> oh just, my god. He's he is uh he is the right hand man of Amir, who is like one of the drug lords, he's the other drug lord that is uh, kidnapping this kid, and he's his right hand man, and he just has an epic mullet, and he's just on the heavier Zero set, lines. but yeah. Zero lines. Doesn't yeah. he steals every scene he's in? He does. Ab That's yeah, true. absolutely. He does look like a fat lesbian woman, though. I feel. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, it's it's a good movie though. Check it out. Extraction. All right, Brick. Final thoughts. Um. Give me a sequel. I was going to ask that question too. I'm in for the sequel. Uh, Even one, if, one other if kid grows up to be a huge badass. How did you guys think? What did you guys think of the kid, Ovi? I think he did well. Um, he has to be a little more emotional than you think someone his age can be as an actor. Right. And he pulls that off. Um, yeah. One part that I was a little confused on is basically when he knows his his dad's right hand man versus like Chris Hemsworth. They're kind of like doing this tug of war between them. I was wondering when does he officially trust Chris Hemsworth rather than like the guy's right hand man? You know what I mean? Only had a choice because Chris Hemsworth was just kind of like throwing him. Like he threw yeah. him in the car, like, let's fucking go. And he also witnessed Chris Hemsworth run through about 40 dudes, you know? Yeah. So he's probably like, all right, I'm not going to cross this guy right now. I'm just going to stick with him. He looks like my best bet at this time. Yeah. That's not a bad play. I mean, the other guy was doing just as much damage, doing just as much crazy yeah. shit, too. And yeah. he also Chris knew Hemsworth, him. I think also when the police turned and the kid realized, like, oh, shit, everyone's out to get me, he started realizing, like, Chris Hemsworth is telling me I can't trust anyone. I think he might be right, because now I obviously can't trust the cops here. So yeah, I think that was a big play, too. They, they, they locked the city on lockdown. And I love... Uh, I, well, we won't get, I won't get into spoilers. Dude, this movie is so good. Move it to the top of your Netflix queue. Uh, I'm trying to think of the last movie that was this good. And I know I was saying it's probably not going to be that great when we talked last week, but it fucking blew me away. 
I actually really like the ending too. It gives you two different perspectives and it leaves it open-ended where without spoiling it, Brick, you mentioned, is there going to be a sequel? We don't know, but some people that might've seen the ending as well might think like, no, there wasn't this, this was just something else that happened. Um, it is I think it was though. Yeah. I, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So whatever. Stick I around wanted, to the end. Yeah. I wanted to have that Rick and Morty line where uh, <laughs> they start this movie kind of at the end like do you know what i mean where they had like that little cut scene and then they cut to like mm -hmm. oh three months later i wanted to have that rick and morty where he's talking with the lighthouse keeper I was like oh, well i think stories should just start where they start and then, <laughs> and then he just like pushes about a flight of stairs but i love that that's funny all right uh yeah like i said move this to the top of your queue watch it it's worth it uh all right let's do our recommendations i'll kick this off outside of mainframe comic-con obviously we've talked enough about that but by the time you hear this It'll probably be over, but you can go back and check the YouTube channel for any interviews you might have missed. That's it. I started watching Midnight Gospel on Netflix, and if you want to trip your fucking balls off without doing any drugs, this is where you start. So this is created by Pendleton Ward, and if you know that name, you've seen either Adventure Time or Bravest Warriors or some of his other animated stuff that he does, and you know how fucking trippy it is. This is Duncan Trussell, who is always on Joe Rogan's podcast. He mm -hmm. narrates this, and he's basically just like this space entity that goes to different versions of Earth. Duncan Trussell has such a unique voice. It's very good I, for voiceovers. Oh, absolutely. I Every time he's on Harmontown, or he was on ha Harmontown, that Dan, Dan Harmon podcast, they stopped doing yeah. that. But he's every time he was on that, he was great. He was on Joe Rogan. He's got he's really funny and very like articulate. He's, I, he's great. I didn't know he was the... Uh, the voice over there that makes you want to watch it more yeah he's good friends with pendleton ward so that's how that all came about so i'll just the very first episode it's it's almost set up like a podcast where pendleton or uh duncan trussell's character goes to an earth talks to somebody in the form of a podcast but the animation behind it is ridiculous and over the top like the very first episode dr drew is the guest and he plays the president of the united states on a world that's going through a zombie apocalypse and they're just acting all nonchalant as they murder zombies in the background and talk about the effect of drugs on the human brain. It's very trippy. Uh, I think I've said enough about it, but... Is it pre- or post-apocalyptic, Mark? It's uh, peri-apocalyptic, which would be Ooh. during. Ooh. Peri-apocalyptic. Point for you, Smithers. Uh, hey, Mark, have you seen how mean? handsome has Mark looked recently? Shut just up. Saying. Mark. <laughs> handsome. So Mark, you got a recommendation? Yeah, I'm going to jump back to mainframe. Uh, Smithers and I aren't doing any, any interview today. However, we do have two commercials that are hopefully going to be airing during mainframe Comic-Con, um, which I will play shortly for you guys to view. We've only released these commercials to our Patreon supporters, so they've seen them already. But since they're going to be played most likely today, we thought we might as well just fucking reel it, baby. And uh, we're going to be... We're going to be interviewing, it sounds like tomorrow, Smithers and I will be sitting down with Lamorne Morris, um, who you may know from New Girl, Game Night, uh, the new Bloodshot movie. We're also going to be sitting down with a few fucking big names from Robot Chicken, um, which include Seth Green, uh, Brecken Meyer, you might know him from Clueless, and um, who's the other guy? Donald Faison. Donald Faison, who Faison. was in Crubs, at Scrubs, Crubs. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Breckenmeyer, you might also recognize from Franklin and Bash. Yes. So, so come check us out tomorrow. Yep. Uh, Brick, I'll give you one chance for a recommendation. I assume you're going to fuck this up. Nope. I recommend um, Mainframe Comic Con. All right. No, 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 no. Um, I recommend going to see, well, I specifically recommend Mainframe Comic Con just so that you can listen to Mark interviewing because he's such a good interviewer and ryan is just kind of a a drag sometimes but mark is going to be there so as long as you got mark there i think we'll be all good same with chuck chuck is good too um but everyone else i mean everyone else is good except for smithers fair but mainly right. mark mark's the man come down and then close it up <laughs> yeah sure all right first commercial here uh this one most likely will be played first this is our medicate yourself with the chump cast commercial enjoy guys <laughs> Do you feel left out when your friends discuss popular culture? Do you prefer to avoid social interaction altogether? Do you sometimes run from ghosts or apparitions in wide open fields, or move unnecessarily slowly for no apparent reason? 
Ask your doctor if the ChumCast is right for you. We inject all of the latest information directly into your bloodstream. Side effects include not knowing where the hell you are, occasional laughter, excessive flatulence, nausea and loss of balance, forgetting where you put your leftover hot dog, gross coughing in public places, wild flailing of your extremities, disassociative or multiple personality disorder, and believing that your parents were murdered in a dark alley. Not, not trying to pat ourselves on the back, that but great. holy fuck, that was good. That was good. That was great. Well done, Excellent. boys. I had a lot of fun putting that together. Uh, thanks, Mark, for the idea for the yeah. uh, type commercial. Hell yeah. Next commercial is our newscast commercial number two. Check it, peeps. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Chumpcast. I am Smithers with another weekly update on all things pop culture. During these unprecedented times, we try to keep a man in the field, and that man is Mark. Mark, can we get an update? Thanks, Smithers. I'm here right now in downtown California, just got in off the 405, and as you can see, it is a ghost town out here. No word yet as to when Batman is gonna save us from this post apocalyptic this post apocalyptic this post, dude, I told you to leave that word off the f***ing script. What were you thinking? Uh, thanks for nothing, Mark. Brick, can you save this segment? Yeah, oh, no, no. Save the segment? No, zero. This has been the Chumpcast. We may hate each other, but we love being nerds. All right. When well, you that, from that pratfall. We should do more dumb shit like that. Coming from the guy that had to, the two guys that had to edit them and put them together. Yeah, maybe we'll see. I I still am editing that blooper reel from that part that I completely cut out of the whole thing. <laughs> I, I anticipate we'll see that sometime within the next uh, nine Never. to six months. Never. Yep. All right. You want to do? Uh, let me announce the points. All right. So. Uh, I actually, a uh, different mindset this week. I'm not going to talk about any of the negatives. This is mainframe Comic-Con weekend. We don't need that shit, you know, floating in the ether. So these are all positive points. I like that about so, you, Mark. With that being said, you guys uh, only had a few, but uh, <laughs> here they are. So one point for Smithers, rolling eyes when Brick was talking about Detroiters. One point <laughs> for Brick. He said slippery slope when we were talking about a snake. Slippery, kind of funny. He probably didn't even realize he said it in relation to that, but gave him nope. a point for it. Thank you. Back to Smithers. One point for the Seinfeld background. Uh, mm -hmm. I know these are usually overused, but that was that was kind of clever. And I'm just surprised Brick wasn't the first to use that one. So one point. I don't for have you. a thing. I, I don't care. No excuses. <laughs> um, back, back to Brick. Somewhat agreeing with me on the HBO Max potential. So uh, you mentioned like DC and Warner Brothers teaming up and maybe coming up with some really dark shit. You know, some okay points. So I'll give you a point. Um, back to Smithers, one point for, for using Perry Apocalyptic and me actually getting that right. So, I mean, there must be some uh, ease of saying that word, and I like it. So Perry Apocalyptic, great word. Back to Brick, one point for not really fucking up while he was reading the extraction synopsis. That was pretty good. Good for you, at least. Thank you. Uh, so we're tied at four points to four points, Brick and Smithers. One point for Smithers for putting together that medicate yourself with the chump cast commercial. So he is ahead, but I think we're going to have to leave this at a tie because brick gave me some props on my interview skills. And I really appreciate that, that brick. So that's another point. Let's leave it at a tie. We don't need to consume any more time watching shitty ass content and movies. So brick, you still have to go and watch your shitty movie from last week. I will mention that, but I'll leave it the at a drone. Tie. I think maybe depending on how bored we are this week, Brick, we could get, we could set up a group viewing of that Robin Hood movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe okay. Jackbox. We should recommend that because that's been pretty fun lately. Yeah, we I, should... need, I need to set up another uh, stream of that. That was fun. So when should we... Do... We're going to be doing stuff tomorrow, right? So tonight. tonight... Yeah. Okay, so maybe we'll do it next starting next week. This will come out after Monday. If you guys want to do a little Jackbox party play, 
shoot us a message in the Discord or on Instagram or on Twitter. All right. Remember when we said we were going to keep this short, and here we are an hour and five minutes later. Uh, let's wrap this up because we got shit to do for Mainframe. So tune in, MainframeComicCon.com or the YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for showing up. And until next time. Chomps out, motherfuckers. Peace. Chomps.